Okay, good afternoon everyone. Today is February 6th. It's a Saturday. This will be my video lecture in NSTP2. No? So before I start my video lecture, I would like you to have with you, as we go along for the discussion of the Bill of Rights, I want you to have with you your 1987 Constitution so that each time that I discuss a particular provision, you can follow through. No? So, uh, for today, <coughs> we will be discussing about the Bill of Rights. Now, the Bill of Rights is otherwise known as the... Uh, uh, what's this? Uh, the Bill of Rights is considered as the uh, pillar of... Uh, as is considered as the uh, we can say the foundation no? the foundation of your rights as Filipino citizen no? so <clears throat> the Bill of Rights is enshrined in uh, 1987 Constitution under Article 3 no? Article 3 of the 1987 Constitution speaks of the Bill of Rights and then there are 22 sections, no? all in all. There are 22 sections, all in all, but uh, I cannot guarantee that we will be finishing all the 22 sections today because a lot of the first provisions will require a thorough discussion of the different principles therein. No? Uh, I want you to remember all your rights as enshrined in the Constitution under the Bill of Rights because this will be your basis <coughs> in invoking uh, your right as a Filipino citizen in case somebody tramples upon your uh, dignity or your rights as uh, Filipinos. No? So it is very important to remember all these rights because in case you are discriminated against, in case you feel that you have been harassed by somebody else, then you can always invoke the pertinent provision of the Bill of Rights. These are your rights as citizens. No? <clears throat> now you may ask, why do we have to study the... Is there a legal basis why we have to study the constitution yes there is because under article 14 no if you have your constitution now i could uh, bring you there so that you can follow through under article 14 section 3 number 1 and number 2 no so if you will open your constitution and proceed to article 14 <coughs> section 3 no you go to section 3 immediately one there are there are uh, three <clears throat> numbers there so you you go to section 3 number 1 it's the, it says there all educational institutions shall include the study of the constitution as part of the curricula <clears throat> and of course it will be fitting to include the study of the constitution through the NSTP program because what we are developing in NSTP, of course, is your rights and obligations as citizens. Actually, under Section 3, also number 2, it says there that you also have to study the rights and duties of citizenship. So, these are the legal basis, if I may say so, why you, have, you need to study the Constitution and rightly fitting through the NSTP program. Now, the last time when we met, the last time we met, uh, we talked about the twin objectives or the twin aims of uh, the twin aims of the NSTP program. The NSTP is RA. What's uh, NSTP again? RA nine one six three, right? And there are two aims, major aims, two aims or objectives, right? This is just a review, no? Of course, the first aim is defense preparedness, no? And this is being, 
studied in the ROPC program, of which we are not offering in this institution. And the second one, of course, is what we call the civic <coughs> consciousness. No? We have to uh, arouse your civic consciousness so that you'll be able to participate effectively in civic and political affairs. No? So, uh, the point here is for civic prepare, uh, for defense preparedness that is being studied under the ROTC program, which I have given you the legal basis before. It's RA 7077. But for civic consciousness, if you would like to arouse your civic consciousness, definitely this is not a function of the CWTS, which is one of the three components of NSTP and also the LTS. That's the third major component of the NSTP. Okay, let us proceed now with Article 3, Section 1. Article 3, Section 1, you have to memorize that. No, because this is a classic uh, provision in the Constitution. It's been there for a long, long time, even in 1935, 1973, and again in the 1987 Constitution. It has been retained. So what does it say? Section 1 would say, No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall any person be denied the equal protection of the laws. No? Very beautiful. So let us dissect this uh, thoroughly or one by one. No? So it says here no person, so we are referring to any individual, any Filipino individual, because the coverage, of course, the one that is being protected here is the Filipino citizen. So every Filipino citizen shall not be deprived. No? What are the three things which a Filipino citizen cannot be deprived of? Well, the first one is life. No? So life. No one can take that away with you, no? Life, liberty, then property, no? So these are the basic things that every citizen has, no? Life, no one can take that away from you. No one can just kill you without, uh, no, uh, no one can just kill you or take your life away because of a certain crime or anything that you have committed, no? There should always be a, well, of course, there is no more death penalty, or, or, although they would like to revive again the death penalty in Congress. But uh, to this point, there is no death penalty. So definitely, even if you have been convicted for a heinous crime, you cannot still be <clears throat> uh, they cannot still take away your life, no? Because life, uh, the basis of this, because you know very well that life is a gift from God, no? So it has its basis in what we call the natural law, no? In natural law, natural law would mean that anything that is natural and life is natural, no one can just take that away even through a law or any provision or any government machinery for that matter. Liberty, when we speak of liberties, of course, we are referring to freedom, no? You cannot be incarcerated for no reason at all, no? Uh, liberty, you are always at liberty to express yourself. Later on, we will be discussing that, the freedom of expression, no? You are at liberty to choose whatever you want, what kind of residence you would like or where you want to live. You have the liberty to go out of the country as long as you have not committed any crime, etc., etc. And now for property, of course, no one can just take that away also as long as you, you are armed with the proper evidence. No? And in one case, property would even include what? Your job or your employment. Your job or your employment can be interpreted as also being part of the property that you possess. Now, 
No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property. I'd like to discuss without due process of law. No? Without due process of law. No? Remember this principle because this is very, very important. Without due process of law. What that means is that um, no person shall be deprived, meaning somebody is taking away your, say for instance, your property, you know, so not without due process of law. No, that means due process of law, meaning you are given the opportunity to be heard, not to be heard, no? meaning to say that even if you are, <clears throat> they would like to dislodge you from ownership of a certain property, no one can just take that away and say, hey, that is my property. No, you cannot just do that. There should be due process of law. Or, hey, you are bound to go to jail because you committed a crime. Well, even the criminals are given the opportunity to be heard. And due process of law would require <clears throat> due process of law would require two elements, no? The two elements that I'm talking about would be uh, when we talk of due process, no? The substantive aspect, no? There are two aspects, no? The substantive aspect and what we call the procedural aspect, no? Procedural aspect, no? So there are two aspects of due process, substantive and the procedural aspect. Let us discuss that one by one. <clears throat> now, we, when we talk of due process, I told you a while ago that nobody can just take away your property or your liberty. You cannot just be incarcerated or in prison without, without basis. No? When we say of the substantive aspect of due process we are talking of the legal no the legal basis no <clears throat> when we talk of this we are talking of the legal basis why they are taking away your property no and when we talk of the procedural aspect there should be notice plus hearing it is required that you have to explain also your side. You have to be given an opportunity to argue, know your position on the matter. So due process is a requirement in any court of law or even in administrative tribunals or anything when your life, liberty, or property is in question. No? Meaning to say that uh, <clears throat> meaning to say that they cannot just let you go to jail they cannot just take away your employment or meaning to say that you cannot just be dismissed from employment without hearing your side due process the phrase due process would mean that first there should be when something is uh, somebody would take away your liberty or your property or <clears throat> somebody would of course uh, during the time kill you they cannot just kill you they cannot just do that summarily without what due process no due process of at, at the time there was uh, what we call due process for those hardened criminals before they go to uh, before they go to uh, in death penalty no of course uh, uh, the law requires that before you have to be incarcerated, the law requires that before uh, they send you, for instance, if there is death penalty, the law requires that your case had been litigated upon thoroughly through the uh, observance of what we call due process, due process of law. I hope that that is clear to you. Due process would mean that my process of no, my processor. Hindi, they cannot just accuse you of something and they cannot just let you go to jail or take away your property without hearing your side. 
okay? You are given a day in court. That is what we call in legal parlance, no? Due process. Then, of course, Section 1 would also speak of equal protection of the laws, no? When we say equal protection of the laws, meaning to say that laws shall apply to everyone, no? Regardless of who you are, whether you are influential, you have uh, money, you are rich, this one should apply to all, no? All laws and all, uh, all provisions of laws and all uh, issuances, decrees, orders should apply to everyone. There is no need for anyone to discriminate even if you are just an ordinary employee or even you are just an ordinary citizen compared to somebody who is a politician, for instance. No? So that is what it means. But... Uh, there is a rule that laws shall only apply, of course, in our country because uh, that is uh, there is a principle wherein laws shall only be jurisdictional. Jurisdictional meaning applicable only to uh, the country which enacted the particular law. So that is section one. Now we go to section two. Section two speaks of. <coughs> Uh, every person or every citizen being secure, a secure uh, as to his person, as uh, he has to be secure in his house, or even the uh, papers or documents and his effects. No, so me, what we mean by secure is that no one can just take that away from you without what we call. So here, for section 2, it talks about section 2 of the Bill of Rights. It talks about unreasonable searches and seizures. Searches and seizures. No? So seizures meaning yung confiscahin, no? They will confiscate. Searches, no? Uh, would require what we call uh, a search warrant. This one, so that they could, uh, they are allowed to go inside your house. It will require a search warrant that we call. And this one will also require, perfecture will require uh, a warrant of arrest. warrant of arrest. No? So, before they could search your house or before they could arrest you, for instance, you need to require what I mean uh, What I mean by who will be ar the arresting officer, of course. No, uh, What I mean by that is, of course, the ones who are arresting you or who are going to your house to search for some documents, say for instance, no? or papers and effects. Now, before they could do that, no, before they could do that, before they could go in, inside your house, of course you require the existence of a duly issued search warrant. Or if they would like to arrest you, of course you have to ask for the warrant of arrest of the arresting officer. And of course, these uh, warrants are not just issued, no? Uh, they are not just issued without no without a judge no a judge of court no the judge whoever the complainant is this one issued by a judge and the judge of course will have to examine first the uh, what's this the complainant and his witnesses no he has to examine first before he issues a search warrant or a warrant of arrest. So it presupposes that before the issuance of a search warrant or, or a warrant of arrest, there should be a complaint. No? A complaint against you, 
about I do not know what what things they would like to confiscate from your house or uh, perhaps there is a crime that you have committed so uh, they would like to arrest you but they cannot just do that without a warrant of arrest so these warrants are issued by a judge and the judge shall first examine the complainant and his witnesses of course before issuing the warrant of arrest He's stating in the complaint what the particulars of the papers, effects, or things they would like to get or to search, and also the reason why, in the case of warrant of arrest, why, uh, why they are arresting him. No? So they have to specify therein the specific felony or crime that you have committed. That's why a warrant of arrest is now being issued by the judge. Uh, I told you that these things or papers or effects and the particular crime that you have committed in case of a warrant of arrest should be specific, specifically stated in the warrant of arrest or in the warrant or in the search warrant. Okay, okay we proceed with section 3. And section 3 will now have something to do about the privacy of communication and correspondence. So you have to be very careful nowadays. Uh, the privacy section 3 will speak of the privacy of communication. <clears throat> so we will now talk about... Section 3 of Article 3, the privacy of communication and correspondence. No? So, in this case, in the case of correspondence, of course, you just do not open any letter or text messages or anything at all because... Uh, the privacy is something that is inviolable. It cannot be violated at all. No? So uh, you have to be very careful no? in opening letters, in opening text messages, in opening whatever forms of communication there is uh, that is intended only for a particular individual because he is guaranteed by the privacy of communication and correspondence which can be found in section 3 number 1 now what happens is that what happens now if a person say a person other than the addressee or recipient of the message or the correspondence uh, opened that and was able to see uh, something that is sensitive or something that is felonious no so if he opens that that communication or correspondence cannot be used as an evidence against no anyone because uh, we have to take a look at the uh, sanctity of the communication or correspondence. That is what it means. So you what I what the constitution is uh, guaranteeing or safeguarding here is. Uh, no one can just open a letter, a text message, or a conversation, or whatever, uh, because that is guaranteed by Section 3, 1 and 2. No? So any evidence uh, that, was, uh, that was taken out of uh, that private communication or correspondence cannot be used as evidence against anyone. Okay, Section 4. <clears throat> We proceed now, no law shall be passed abridging the freedom of expression or of the press or of the right of the people to assemble to assemble peaceably. You know, so what it means is that here, the freedom of speech, of expression or of the press, there are three freedoms of expression for section 4. These are freedoms guaranteed by the Constitution for Section 4. Freedom of expression. Of the press. And 
Freedom of expression of the press and the right, the freedom of, of course, the first one is speech, no? The freedom of speech. So these are the three freedoms, no? That are guaranteed by also the Constitution, no? Freedom of speech, meaning to say, uh, you are at liberty to say anything as long as it is legitimate and it, in, it is within the bounds of the law, it is within the bounds of uh, the uh, law or regulation for that matter. So you can say anything as long as it is legitimate because this is a democratic country. But uh, make sure that whatever you say is within the limits or bounds of the law or the regulation. The same with the freedom of expression. You can express anything that you want as long as you are not uh, violating or transgressing any law for that matter. Also, the press, they are given also that freedom. They can write anything, but the limitations would be that they should not be violating any law for that matter. Okay? And of course, the final freedom that is... Uh, being talked about in number four is the freedom to assemble peaceably. The freedom to assemble peaceably, no freedom to assemble. We are talking about if you have a a right or a freedom to assemble. This is otherwise known as what we call if you would like to rally, you no, know, on a certain issue, you can also do that, but. You have to do it peacefully, no? There should be no disruption of anything that might endanger the life or the security of anyone, okay? Now, section 5. <clears throat> no law shall be made respecting the establishment of religion. No? Very important, especially nowadays, that we are welcoming diversity when it comes to faith, no? So what it means by no law shall be passed, no, no law shall be made respecting an establishment of religion is that respecting would mean favoring. No, you favor a certain uh, denomination or a certain sect, like say for instance Catholics no, or Catholicism. If you favor Catholicism by virtue of... Um, giving them concessions or giving them more incentives or um, uh, giving them more privileges, you cannot do that. The law can be questioned anytime by being constitutionally infirm by virtue of Section 5 of the Constitution. And, and of course, because uh, it also speaks of religious freedom, no, you can just choose or profess in any religious denomination you want to without being discriminated against <clears throat> or uh, what it means that you should not be uh, there should be no discrimination at all or without any preference whatsoever with, with respect to opportunities with respect to privileges with respect to resources etc in several cases it has been upheld by the supreme court that a a an act or a law or any any uh, say for instance any concession or any special privilege given to a certain denomination or religion is constitutionally infirm so say for instance if the government will give money to uh, the catholic church or disperse money to the catholic church just it's just a basic example they cannot just do that because they will be violating Section 5 of the Constitution. Also, in the exercise of civic and uh, political, uh, in the exercise of uh, civic and political uh, privileges or freedoms, there is no religious test that is required. Whether you are a Catholic, you are a born again, you are a Protestant, uh, you are. Um, INC, uh, there is no 
religious test that is required. You can vote whether you belong to any of these denominations. You can also avail of the services of the government or social services that are being offered by the government. You can also uh, claim for those privileges whether you belong to uh, the uh, whether you belong to any of the religious denomination. It doesn't matter. I think we have to stop there for now. I will just uh, write down your assignment for next meeting. We will continue with section 6 of the Bill of Rights until, until we are able to finish section 22. These are very important because if we translate uh, the Bill of Rights, Karapatang uh, Pantao, no? that is what is the, the translation of Bill of Rights would be Karapatang Pantao. No, these are your rights, so you should know them by heart. Okay, thank you and good afternoon. Good morning, everyone.